Guru Nation, and welcome back to episode 133, I believe, John, of Random Musings from the Clinical Trials Guru. This also might go on YouTube. I don't know yet. Maybe. We got good news for everyone listening, watching, paying attention. We, You may recognize this man from uh, previous videos we did, so... John is a CRA Academy graduate, right? True. We're doing this on Snapchat and Instagram right now. So he's a, he's a graduate. He got yeah. an interview. So tell us the story, John. Why? You tell it better than me. Okay. Um, I graduated some time ago, worked with Global a little bit, worked with Breakthrough. And virtually all of my interviews, I've done a couple of interviews. I go in with so much preparation and I always do very well. Uh, and a, a little bit of inch here and there. So it's like a ticket. Yeah. Back in Texas, if you don't take care of it on time, it can come up in your background. Maybe. So let's talk about that. So glad you got that in got glad you got into that. I didn't want to bring it up unless you wanted to. That's okay. But I'm glad you did. I was looking more for your who you are. We'll get into that too. But sure. tell so you had an unpaid parking ticket or something from Texas. It's it's like a misterminal in Considered a misdemeanor. A misdemeanor. For not paying your... For not taking care of um, some tickets, so to say. Yeah. And if you don't take care of it on time, it might spark into a court case, <laughs> which, um, <laughs> not uh, which, which is not good, and it comes back on your background. And yeah. so let's give the Guru Nation the um, synopsis of what happened. So you've been in the Sierra Academy. Mm-hmm. You passed. You went through the internship. Sure. And I encouraged you, just like I do everyone, go go look for a trial master file. Sure. Position. Go look for an in-house CRA. Go look for... A coordinator position. Coordinate anything. Whatever you're able to do just to get your feet into the career path that you choose to. And that I did. And you did exactly that. I right? did exactly that. So how many interviews did it take... How many applications, how many interviews did it take to get that first job offer? Um, I had to work really hard. The, the way I send up my resume, it's, I, I do it on Tuesdays because usually you expect that Mondays offices are busy with other things, even yeah. recruiters. And Tuesday I pump out so many. If I do less, it's a hundred um, on Tuesday, then I get... I keep talking, so I really sent out a lot. Um, I guess um, the communication we had, because the first call that comes usually is from a recruiter to size you up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got loaded with so much information and learning from the training. Mm -hmm. So I, while I was applying to an entry level position, like I didn't know anything, the information I had from the training was far more than what I was applying for. I so see. it was pretty easy for me to get a place. Once you got the interview? Once I got the interview. The very first one, my first interview gave me the job. The it was a contract. And the second one, my very first interview gave me that job. That's really good. Yeah. And for the second one, the, for the issue of the ticket first came up. And yeah. But what, so what happened on that first one? Why didn't you take that one? I, the, 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 the first one after, the first one was global, the second one was breakthrough, and then when my contract was ending, I started looking for again, then I got an interview with um, Cook's Children in Texas. Okay, okay. And it went very well. Yeah. We were all happy. And it's one interview I went to and they were busy asking themselves. I, yeah. I had about five people interviewing me. Wow. They were like, 
any more questions? You seem to have answered <laughs> everything. And, you know, we ran it up happy. And he gave me the job. And he said, well, something came up in my background, some ticket stuff. Or that was the second one. That was the very first one. Oh, I mean, that was my third first. interview because I already was in Global at that point. My contract yeah, yeah. with Global was about to come to an end. Oh, okay. So I was looking for something else. And that was the first one. So the ticket came up then? The, the, the ticket came up then. Global didn't mind the ticket issue yeah. because... It's in California. It's a little more lean. It's a little bit more lean. Um, so the, this Cook Hospital, what was the role that you were going to do? It's supposed to be a regulatory. I was in, okay, because of my background, Yeah. Um, it was easy for me to fit into. It's about the same thing, like you said some time ago, whether you are in-house CIA or you are a specialist in checking of the regulatory document, it's about the same thing. Mm -hmm. So what I got with um, Cook's children was to be one of the people in charge of the record. It, it's actually not the not the entire clinical research that interviewed me. They had a team for regulatory. Yeah. So it's a team for the regulatory wow. that wanted to that interviewed me. They had about six people, and they wanted me to be the seventh person for the hospital for the. The, the research arm of the hospital. Of the hospital. Now, they were the site, or they are also the sponsor? I think it's a site and a sponsor. Yeah, I but think a lot of these academic hospitals, yeah. or research hospitals, do that. Like, I just interviewed, uh, I know you watched some of the videos, mm -hmm. Mount Sinai, hospital director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same kind of situation, I think, as what you're explaining. They do, they're the site, but they also do some investigator-initiated studies. And they expect um, CIOs to visit, monitors to come visit the site. Yeah. So the major thing was, how do I prepare if a monitor was coming to visit? I had to go through everybody who is involved in training, That's making right. sure that their credentials are in place. Everything. Everything yeah. was uh, properly documented in mm -hmm. all the files. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I got that job and getting ready to start, I got a call from the recruiter to say, hey, something came up and yeah, and something, uh, he actually advised me to, this is unbelievable. Yeah, he advised me to go and sponge it. Again, that same attitude, you know, I don't think it's a major thing. You so know. you had an unpaid traffic ticket or parking ticket or something once mm -hmm. you never paid it and not once it's more than once I, I, I blame myself for being careless you but, just you, know, you just forgot about them or yeah. whatever well I mean for it coming up on my background it's uh, yeah it's something like that something as mm -hmm. meaningless as a ticket can turn into a warrant mm -hmm. Which can then show up on your record sure. as a misdemeanor, and then for some of these sponsors won't hire you. Mm -hmm. That's crazy to think that. <laughs> so a lesson to Guru Nation: pay your parking tickets. Oh yeah, take care of anything <laughs> that might come up. Um, wow. Because you never really can tell. So here you are. You you landed your dream job. You got hired. Mm -hmm. You signed all the papers. Yeah, I signed all the papers already. The, f the, the, the first one, yeah, the, <laughs> I signed all the papers. And then they, this thing came out, and they said, sorry, we got to take it away. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. So then you had to start all over. I had to start all over. I started start sending out resumes. Frustrating? Extremely, but you don't, you don't, you don't take it. You don't, you don't give up. Right. You know? yeah. See, a lot of people, why? Well, a lot of people would have, give up, got discouraged, maybe because you saw that, you you tasted it, you yeah. got hired. <laughs> because um, I still give all the credit to the training. You know, I have seen other stuff compared to what I got from the training. Yeah. I've been to different interviews, getting questions compared to the questions I got in the training. From the Sierra Academy? Sierra Academy. It's good to know. I know that so much what's given. Yeah. You know, and it's 
something you really want to do because you know you believe that you've learned so much? We try, man. I mean, a lot of people listening that don't know, I don't think they realize how hard, like, the staff, all of us work. I mean, from Shanae to Brenda to me to Chris to Amy to all the kids, we work hard. There's so much information. Yeah. It, practically, it's everything that you need to know. So it's easy for you to hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I had that advantage. And there's also so much information that when whoever wants to ask a question, you already know where the person is going to. Yeah. Because you were open to learning and you have to read up a lot of stuff sometimes. Yep. Yeah. So, so I remember you. when I got the good news from you that you got hired. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this is excellent. Let's plan our Skype interview. <laughs> and then a few days later, you said, actually, I did it again. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, and I'm not you, but I was feeling discouraged for you. No, I, it, it really it hit me so hard, it hit my, my wife so hard. Yeah. Um, but this next, so then you reapplied to a bunch of places. You yeah, just kept sure. doing it, right? Yeah. How did you get in? Uh, you said a recruiter? Recruiter is the way to go? Yeah. Um, you, I, I, what happens is you get adverts and you send out your resumes. Yeah. You never can tell who is if it's directly the hiring yep. manager or if they are going through recruiter. recruiters. Yeah. So whoever comes up to say, "Hey, are you available for this role?" And the other critical part is your location. Uh, if if I was located in California, New York, um, if I was around Boston, Massachusetts, I'm sure I'd have been hired long ago. Hmm. So you know, being in Texas, being in Texas, you think it, you're at a disadvantage. Yeah, because the first question that comes is, "Hey, I see your resume. You have a Texas address. This is where the job is, and you walk in breakthrough." I'm like, "Okay, yeah, I I got to travel to um, California for work. Yeah, but I'm in Texas. That's where my family is based." Okay, no, this job for someone local. Oh, yeah. so they saw your right yeah. address and assumed you're from California. Yeah, if it is California, that, that's yeah. the reason why I landed yeah, yeah, this yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to say, okay, since you've been coming to California, and honestly, I, I don't have any problem moving right now. <laughs> so, advice to, because there's others in your shoes. There's yeah, I mean, lot. if you really want to go into this industry and you have an option of relocating from areas that are not hiring. Like the middle of the country. Yeah, just. Go to the coast. Yeah, go to where, go to areas where the studies are now. Where that's so interesting. You know what I tell? Um, that's for the employees, the people that want to be CRAs. More of the opportunities are on the coast. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you can't get a job if you're in the middle of the country. You just need more experience. But I tell the site owners the opposite. <laughs> Get away from the coast if you try to open a site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The two yeah. things. If you want a site, go away. If you want a job, come to where the job. Do you know if I were in Iowa, I would make double my, the money I make? <laughs> Seriously. Why Maybe not you? double. Maybe not double. Why don't you move? <laughs> Too many opportunities here, right? I, I just agree. I like the way that everything is like I'm too used to it here. I don't think double anymore, but I would make more. Mm -hmm. And it would be easier. Um, and it would be easier for my CRO because um, from California to go to New York is six hours. Mm -hmm. From Iowa to go to New York, it's only three. Right? Um, so interesting because I tell people opening sites the opposite. Like sure. anytime we get a client from Chicago, from Denver, right? Texas. Texas is getting competitive too with the sites, but um, all the other places, you know, they can make a lot of money just being where they are. My best clients are in Ohio, Kentucky, Arkansas. Not places you want to live. Nothing against those places. Mm -hmm. I've actually never been to any of them. But uh, that's where the it's all supply and demand. So same thing when you're looking for a job, you gotta go to where the jobs are. Sure. Right? So interest. So there's a lot of people in your shoes, John, that are. Probably need to consider relocating. Yeah, I think it's the key. Um, irrespective of what happens with this job, it's a six-month contract. 
yeah. that it's a contract to hire a job. Uh-huh. If the hiring comes up, that's fine. So you fine. get a six month contract? Yeah. If the hiring comes up, that's fine. If it doesn't, um, that's also fine. Well, I'm, I'm, but you I'm get sure. experience though. So yeah. once you get it, even six months, whether they hire you or not, oh, yeah, you sure. get more experience. Absolutely. And your job now is an in house CRA. Yeah. And not just in house CRA, I have to be reviewing CRA's report. Beautiful. <laughs> but you're not commenting on their comments. I don't think so. I don't think it's required. You're just, it's just, sure just to make sure that everything is um, done at the right time. And you know what else you're going to probably have to do? I don't know anything about your job, but in-house CRA, your uh, monitors, when they go on site, they have to collect documents, like scans or whatever the process is for your CRO or the sponsor. They have to collect documents from the sites, mm-hmm. like essential documents. So they attach those to the report, and your job as the in-house CRA is to make sure that they're all there, that there's not anything missing. Sure. There's a lot of reports. I mean, it's the report, and then it's the central documents. And then I assume you're going to be doing something with a trial master file. Yeah, the trial master file, both the paper file and the electronic file. So it's paper and electronic. Yeah. They, they, they have some trials that have not transferred to electronics yet. Okay. So um, it's going to be busy. Fantastic. Um, I, I think that um, there will be a lot of learning. Yeah. I. At this stage, my major concern is on the learning aspect. Yeah. You know, um, after that, I can choose to go back to Texas because I know that um, the demand for what I know will be high. It'll be better. Your mm-hmm. job, your prospects will be better. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> what? So, in-house CRA is great because you don't pigeonhole yourself. Like, you're doing a little bit of everything as an in-house mm-hmm. CRA. Most CRAs that I know started either as coordinator or as an in-house CRA. Like, well, almost all of them. Unless they're a nurse. If they're an RN, sometimes they get hired with no experience just because they're an RN. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they like that for CRAs. But uh, at everyone else, you start as a CRC or as an in-house CRA. Or even trial master file. But see, the more specific you go the harder it is to grow from that position yeah, you, somewhere you else. Yeah, you get yourself locked into yes. a particular aspect. It becomes difficult to break away mm-hmm. and um, grow your career path. But the, the major thing I'm looking at is to be one of your site owners. Site owner? Yeah. That's when I will tell you to move to Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> move to Kansas. Places that it, there's not that much competition for sites. Okay. Right? The hard part there is to find the physician that wants to do research with you because in, in those small, smaller communities, it's harder to find the physicians. Here, you can find in California where I'm sitting, I mean, literally, you can, I can throw a rock and I probably hit a physician. Oh, wow. They're right there. Right there. And they're, they're concentrated in the hot, hot pockets like L.A., you know, they're, they're in the rural communities, but they're, those communities are underserved. And these physicians don't have time to do anything else. They don't really have time to do re- It's always going to be a challenge. They're already too busy with their clients. Yeah. They don't want to get into research. Anymore. So no matter where you go, it's a challenge. Mm-hmm. But the important thing is to get started, like you did. So oh, it's yeah. It's really good. Really good. Mm-hmm. So now we got other people from the family that want to do research to you? Sure, my brother is interested and my <laughs> wife is interested. Very good. It's going to be a research uh, family. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Any uh, closing remarks? Well, I, I, it's not because I'm talking to Dan. It's what I, I believe in. Um, you, you, you on the promise and you over deliver. That's good to hear. Yeah, um, I keep asking myself how it would have been possible. Your free stuff you have on on YouTube, on the internet. Um, after listening to your first two hours video, yeah, the crash course. That's the one everybody <laughs> buys. Yeah, yeah, I was asking myself, what do you really have to gain putting so much time into it? Until uh, I met you, uh, it's good. Without people like you, the industry would have still been like a secret cult. Yeah. 
you're making it awful, and I'm sure some people yeah. are not happy with you, but... A lot of haters. A lot, a lot of people are happy yeah, with you. a lot you. of haters. <laughs> a lot of thumbs down. It's mm-hmm. good. Um, I like it. I yeah. like the... I mean, what I can say is thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It's, it's been awful. Yeah, thank you very much. wonderful. We're, doing, we're redoing that to yeah. our video this year. I don't think I ever talked about it. Really? Um, yeah, we're, so we're writing a book. Me and my team are right now writing a... It's going to be a big book. Not as big as this one. But it's going to be a pretty big book, like a real book, on everything about clinical research that you need to know to get a job, start a site, whatever. A uh, comprehensive guide to clinical research. And hopefully by summer, maybe fall, it comes out. And then I'm going to redo that two-hour video. I'll still have that old one on there. But now it's going to be a newer one. Mm-hmm. It's gonna have slides. It's gonna be more professional, but uh, it's about time because that one, uh, that one. You see how that your tie you use then? Yeah, the tie I was using. <laughs> that one was, you know, that was like 2012. Mm-hmm. I've changed so much <laughs> since then. I mean, <laughs> hopefully I get in better shape in between now and then. But yeah, like we we need to redo it. First of all, a lot of things change too. Yeah, yeah, GCP. yeah. The industry is very very dynamic. Things mm-hmm. change. Um, the last time I was here for in your office, we're talking about a core. There's a C added. There was a C added to our Yeah, of course, that C. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't realize it. Even people working in the industry now, <laughs> they don't know. Have you used that in any interviews? No, I haven't. They, oh. they haven't even asked me. I'm surprised. I'm like, they okay. might not know. Oh yeah. You know, but sometimes I use it as a line. Yeah. You know, when you're making a presentation, you have to sell yourself. I have to say, okay, I know all of this. Yeah. That's awesome. So now this next job, you should get it. Yeah, I'm hopeful. I think everything is done already. I'm, I'm you already told them about your issues with the tickets, sure. right? Sure. And they don't have a problem with it. No, they don't seem to. They just want to get the paperwork from background check. And okay. So the only thing that will show up is that, and that's yeah, it? Yeah, sure. Good. Hopefully, I think you'll, uh, for that to be an issue again would be, uh, like, pretty rare, mm-hmm. I think. Like, you, you'd be better no, off winning I'm, the lotto. I'm hopeful that if I get this, I should be able to get the main job. That's right. Yeah. The CRA. I have the network I need to do anything to throw at me. And now, you know, those six months, that six-month mm-hmm. contract, first of all, they'd be stupid not to renew because the supply of good people out here on the west coast is so low, right? But even if you don't, you're in California now. You sure, can get any job sure, you want. Sure, sure, Get any job. I make a whole lot of difference. Well, thank you, John. I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing with the Guru Nation. Thank you so much, Dad. I appreciate and, it. And uh, we'll, now that you're going to be a neighbor, you're working like maybe 10 minutes from here, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yeah. What street is that on? Um, Ventura. I think they have different buildings. Is it off of the 4 5 or the 5? F- oh, 4 5. Oh, by the airport? Yeah, that way. Okay. That would have been even closer to where we just moved from. Yeah, when I put it on my <laughs> GPS, it was like 3 4 minutes away. And now we're like 8 minutes away. <laughs> yeah. 10 minutes away. Without traffic, people. That's one thing you're going to learn about California. Traffic I know. is a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Nightmare. I just came from New York. That's nothing compared to this. Nothing. Only Manhattan, maybe, is worse. I know some part of New York is also very busy. It's bad, but this is worse. Just throwing that out there. But uh, we'll follow you on your journey of becoming a CRA um, now that you'll be closer. Oh, I'm planning, uh, now that you're going to be Orange County local, Mm -hmm. I am meeting with somebody from uh, ACRP. Okay. Association of Clinical Research Professionals. You know there's no Orange County chapter? Oh, really? You know who wants to start one? You? That's right. <laughs> so I'm meeting with someone Thursday. Okay. I guess she's involved. And uh, we're going to... Preliminary steps to seeing how we can make that happen. Well, so you'll be, be part of those. Sure, absolutely. That will work well because you're done at 5.30. Mm-hmm. But you don't want to drive at that time. It's horrible. So you can hang out here. Sure for those meetings, and then by the time it's over, like at 7, now it's no traffic, or much less. Mm-hmm. 
Alright, John. Lots of fun. We'll talk soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Dan.